For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Hello, I am a concerned citizen and a sinner by nature who, by the grace of God, has been reborn and has cut off from the old man and become a new man by being reborn by water and the Spirit, just as Jesus mandated. Being reborn does not mean you do not have fallen nature. It just acknowledges that you are at war with it. I believe we live in a nation that God is blessed because he has providential work for this nation to do. Standing up to Hitler and atheistic communism were important contributions that only America could have done. But as I watch our country drift into secularism and embrace practices that are sinful, I am increasingly alarmed that we will lose our blessing and our usefulness to God and fall like a rotten piece of fruit. All the media pundits say this election is about jobs, and jobs are important. But could it be that from God's point of view, there are even more important issues that should take center stage? To name one that escapes all discussion is the fact that up to, ten, up to seven out of ten children do not have a father. Without a father's firm discipline and guiding hand, a child can quickly go astray. Without a father, many times a Gan figure will be a substitute. Without a father as a disciplinary figure, many times a child grows in the path of least resistance, following the voice of his fallen nature. Once he reaches high school, his misconduct in the classroom diminishes what the teacher can accomplish. If you do not think disrespect in the classroom is a problem, you have not been paying attention. And do you suppose that having over half our children born out of wedlock might have repercussions for the health of our nation? And if you believe that this is a problem, why is it occurring? What has changed in our culture that this is now happening? I suggest that the removal of Christ from our classrooms and the public square, has had much to do with it. Also, the teaching of evolutionary materialism has taught our kids that they are not the product of God, but of random, non-directive evolutionary forces. They are taught they are descended from the apes. Darwin's theory denies the creative, purposeful hand of God. Now, on the other hand, people who believe we were made by an intelligent design, by a loving God, who gave life from life, Feel this way as David so nicely expressed. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Our education system robs the internal spirit and force-feeds our kids this evolutionary atheistic nonsense. Think about it. The simplest thing needs a blueprint, a design. You cannot have a pencil, a mousetrap, or a car without a design. A design means a designer. Now think about how complex a cell is far more complex than the most modern jet plane. Think of what it does. Say you just drank a soda and your blood is overloaded with sugar, and if it is not taken out quickly, your bloodstream, out of your bloodstream, you will die. The cell looks up from the DNA the instructions on how to make insulin. The part of the code that creates this is marked front and back. Then that code is reproduced in a strand of messenger RNA. Once the instruction set is made, it is sent out of the nucleus into the cell where the code is read by the mitochondria and the raw amino acid products are assembled in the proper sequence to make insulin. Then it is tagged with an address and escorted to where it is to go. 
The complexity of the process boggles the imagination. Bill Gates referred to DNA as being code far superior to any code man has made. Do you really think this evolved from accidental mutational forces? Even given an infinite amount of time, randomly hammering boards together will not give you a home. Same with a cell. And the things a cell does could take generations of study. It is that complex and elegant. Anything with complex functioning cannot be built hit or miss in small increments, as Darwin's theory insists. For example, for a reptile to slowly turn into a bird over a vast span of time, the wing would be non-functioning impediment to it for numerous generations. The species would not survive with a non-functioning appendage that drags it down. Now, no, it would have to come fully functional, as indeed the Bible says it was. And God made the beasts of the earth after their kinds, and the cattle after their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that, w saw that it was good. Imagine for a minute a wagon evolving into a car. While the engine was evolving, it would be in a non-functioning state. It would be a real drag on the wagon's functioning while it was evolving, so it would not survive its purpose to carry things. The motor has to come completed for it not to be disastrous for the wagon. So many of Darwin's ideas fall flat, and many scientists since the discovery of DNA and the fine-tuning of the universe have abandoned Darwin's theory, just like many economists have abandoned Marx's theory. Speaking of Marx and materialist philosophers that deny God and Christ, they eagerly embraced Darwin's materialism because it supported their atheistic philosophy. You have to wonder why we force kids to learn something that was deeply embraced by the worst tyrants of the, of the past few generations. Marx, Hitler, Lenin, Mao, and Stalin were all enchanted with Darwin. It gave credibility to their materialistic outlook. The statist believes there is no God, hence all rights are derived from the government. In this country, we believe our rights are inalienable and that they are derived from God. And that is why this country is so wonderful because our system is based on godly truth. But our system has been infiltrated. Our children are being taught materialism under the guise of science. Who is responsible for this? Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Peter says, Be self-controlled, be alert, for the enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whomever he can devour. Is it under any wonder that while we were not alert, our colleges became infiltrated by the radical left, which indeed had an agenda for our kids in our nation? And we slept as prayer, Bible readings, and the Ten Commandments were removed from our children's education. And since abortion has been made legal, the death of 35 million babes in the womb is the result. What especially is alarming is the homosexual agenda to teach the very young that this practice is normal, even admirable. Barack Obama, speaking to the homosexual community, said that a man and a man and a woman and a woman is just as admirable as the traditional man and woman. We see a time in which we as a nation finally recognize relationships between two men or two women as just as real and admirable as relationships between a man and a woman. He wants the Democratic platform to include homosexual marriage. His deputy czar for school safety is a pro-homosexual activist leader who wrote The Queering of Elementary Education, Advancing the Dialogue About Sexualities and Schooling. In a nutshell, the homosexual agenda is to teach the very young that the homosexual lifestyle is normal and admirable. That Obama would not allow this man into our children's school bespeaks a complete rejection of the Word of God. The innocence of children is a very important value. Uh, it's a value that our own culture has neglected. And the price of that neglect has been concrete harm, real harm, to an awful lot of innocent young people. We need to do something about it. Now, one thing we can do about it is not make it worse. And what threatens to make it worse at the moment is the appointment of Kevin Jennings 
to a deputy assistant secretary position in the Office of Education with responsibility for safe and drug-free schools. Uh, schools that are safe for children are schools that respect the rights of parents and they're schools that respect the innocence of children. Children don't need to be learning about homosexual practices in elementary school. They don't need to be learning about sexual practices of any type in elementary school. But Kevin Jennings and people who are associated with him have been promoting just that. Jennings is the author of a foreword of a book called Queering Elementary Education. Well, we don't need elementary education to be queered. But what Jennings is signifying by that term, queering elementary education, is a desire to use our elementary schools in defiance of the wishes of parents, to use our elementary schools to teach pro-sexual liberationist, pro-homosexualist propaganda. That's bad. That's got to be opposed. And we at the American Principles Project are going to take the lead in opposing it. We all know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. You do not need a Bible to know it is pure foolishness for a man to mate with a man or a woman with a woman. And there are serious health concerns when you disobey the natural biology. So why would you teach our kids that this is an admirable lifestyle? What does the Word of God say about this? The book of Corinthians says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexu sexually immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The book of Corinthians also says, Therefore God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts, the sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. The book of Romans says, Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. We are not bound to Old Testament law, but this is what God said. If a man lie with a man with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. So is God a hateful God? And are Christians haters because they believe this to be true? Christians know that we are all born in a state of original sin due to the fall. We all fall short of the glory. We all have a sin that crouches at our door. It is okay to say we were born that way because we probably were. But it is wrong to say that because you are a natural womanizer or a born thief that you should practice these things. The same of homosexuality. You may have been born with this, but just as the thief should overcome the promptings of his fallen nature, should, so should the homosexual. You do no favor to the homosexual to tell him his lifestyle is admirable and give him a month to have pride over it. In fact, why would President Obama want a gay and transgender pride month? For that matter, wouldn't it be silly to have a heterosexual pride month? What's to be proud of? It sometimes boggles the imagination to see how politicians pander for votes. You do the sinner a favor by telling him he has a deliverer who understands his condition and can set the captive free. By being reborn by water and spirit into Jesus' family, you will be given the tools you need to master your fallen nature and subdue the enemy through the word of God. Don't tell the sinner to go on sinning because it's in his genes that it's okay. Now you've helped him stay in a lifestyle that, for most, result in an early death and disease. If the Bible is right, and there is not repentance, also that person will not see the kingdom of heaven. The homosexual has a much brighter outlook if he can repent his lifestyle and be reborn. That is why Christ came, to set us all free. Until you are reborn, you are a slave to sin. You will ride high and mighty for a while, but sin always cheapens and sickens. Also of concern is President Obama's associations with Marxists. 
Diversity czar Mark Lloyd praised the revolution of communist leader Chavez, who would like to destroy the U.S. Um, in Venezuela, Chavez uh, really had an incredible revolution, democratic revolution, to begin to put in place things that were going to have an impact on the people in Venezuela. The property owners and the folks who were then controlling the media in Venezuela rebelled, worked frankly with folks here in the U.S. government, uh, worked to oust him when he came back in another revolution, and then Chavez began to take very seriously media in this country. White House Communications Director Anita Dunn told a high school class she looked for inspiration from Mao Zedong. Mao was the communist butcher who had children rat on their parents so he could kill them. He killed over 20 million of his own people in the Cultural Revolution, which he devised to keep power. And tips actually come from two of my favorite political philosophers, Mao Zedong and Mother Teresa, not often coupled with each other, but, but the two people that I turn to most. How could she praise a man more hideous than Hitler? President Obama in his teens was mentored by a man just named Frank in his memoir. But we now know Frank to be Frank Marshall Davis, a communist who believed in the overthrow of our system and replacing it with atheistic communism. He began his first, uh, Barack Obama began his first campaign out of the home of domestic terrorist Bill Ayers. This does not seem to bother the mainstream press. To me, it just shows how far we have drifted from God-centered values. So, who to vote for? If you are a Christian, please consider this. Just like two thieves at the cross, I liken to the left and the right the political parties. Both were thieves, but the one on the right recognized Jesus and acknowledged God's salvation plan and was saved. The thief on the left mocked Christ, did not accept what God was doing, and rejected his salvation plan. The radical left has taken prayer out of school taken the Ten Commandments from the classroom walls, and has silenced all teachers from quoting from Scripture or challenging materialistic evolution with intelligent design. They have defended the killing of innocent life, the babe in the womb, and promoted the homosexual lifestyle, giving it a pride month and trying to legitimize what both New and Old Testament says is a sinful lifestyle. They have loose tax dollars for the harvesting of cells and organs from living human embryos for research. They say the right hates for standing up for the word of God. No, it is not hate that drives a Christian, but truth and love and compassion. When people or countries get into a mess, usually it is because they have not cleaved to the truth. And the truth will set people free from the bondage of sin. And that is what motivates Christians.